Hello. Have you got a compass, but you don't really know how to use it? Well, in this video, I'm going to take you through taking and walking on a bearing using a compass. When we're taking a bearing from a map, the first thing we need to do is identify where we're walking from and where we're walking to. What we do then is we place our compass on the map and then using one edge of the compass, we just line them up here and here. Once we've aligned those up, making sure that this, which is the direction of travel arrow, is pointing in the direction we're walking towards, i.e. away from this point, towards this one. You don't have this pointing the other way, otherwise you'd be going backwards. You then orientate this dial by just turning this dial here, and then you turn it until, not till the needle points north, but until these orientation lines match up, pardon me, I've just moved the compass there, until those orientation lines line up with these eastings, the blue lines on the map here. Once they're lined up, uh, the magnetic needle can be pointing anywhere, that doesn't matter. It's actually this number here between these two yellow points, which is called the index pointer. It's that number that you want to read off pretty much. Now, I said pretty much because actually there's a little bit more complexity to it than that. Most of you all know when you've got a compass that the red end points towards north, but to be precise, it points towards magnetic north because there are actually three norths that we need to be aware of. We've got true north, we've got grid north, which is what's on the map, and then we have magnetic north. Now, true north is just a point you know, in the North Pole. We've also got something called grid north. Uh, now, grid north are the east things on the map and how that's aligned, which is much more useful for navigation. But again, we can't see that on the map no one has drawn these lovely blue squares you know all over the ground so we can't use those for navigation by themselves and also we need to be aware that grid north can't align with true north precisely because this you know the earth is a 3d object it's a sphere and grid north you know that, that is a two-dimensional shape and the lines are parallel so it's never going to align exactly because it would need to kind of converge at the top and obviously because they're parallel it doesn't then we have magnetic north and that is simply put it's just how the magnetic field of the earth aligns and it just so happens to be pretty close to grid north and true north so we can use that as a reference point but one thing to be aware of with magnetic north is it moves over time as well so you need to be aware of what the difference is between magnetic north and grid north in order to make the right sort of calculations now, if you live in part of the world where you do need to make that calculation between grid north and magnetic north, then there is a way of doing that. You can look up what the angle is, and then you apply that you know, to your bearing that you've just taken. And whether you add or subtract, people will say you know, little things to remember, like grid to mag, add, mag to grid, get rid. But actually, that calculation depends on where you are in the world. And we've got to bear in mind this is a global audience so you know it will change depending on where you are the best thing to do is look up the value that you need to add or subtract and um, you know take it for your part of the world now when you're looking up what the angle is a lot of people mistakenly think that is magnetic declination they need to look up that is a common misconception because in the truest sense magnetic declination is actually the difference between true north and magnetic north and what we want to calculate is the difference between grid north and magnetic north and that's called the grid magnetic angle or grid declination and you can look that up on the website for your location bear in mind it does change over time so it is worth looking it up at least every year or so and just make sure that it hasn't changed too much where it's going to throw your navigation at a kilter but just to prove that great britain really is great the planet has aligned its magnetic field over us and so there is less than one degree difference between magnetic north and grid north for great britain at the moment and of course the planet's done that purely for our convenience because we're far too important to be doing those gma calculations and the planet agrees with us so thank you very much planet earth for the rest of you make sure you do apply it because it is pretty important Okay, so we've got our bearing now. We've taken the two points on the map. We've aligned that with one edge of the compass. 
we've then you know turned the housing so that the orientation lines are aligned with the eastings on the map we've made sure the direction of travel arrow is pointing in the di right direction and then we've read off the number from the index pointer and applied our grid magnetic angle so what actually is a bearing well all a bearing is it's a more precise way of communicating a direction because if we just rely on the four cardinal points north east south and west then obviously there's a lot of variance between north and east you know that's really hard to communicate if i was to say i was a little bit a little bit east of north there's a lot of scope for error there so it's much more precise to say 10 degrees because that is a much more precise uh, direction now there are 360 degrees in a full circle and between each cardinal point there are 90 degrees so we've got zero if this was north 90 180 and 270. to walk on a bearing all we need to do is enter the number into the index pointer here now this could have been calculated earlier on before you left the house or maybe you just read it off the map don't forget to apply the calculation for grid magnetic angle so you've got that there and then it's simply a case of holding this in close to your body making sure that there's nothing on your person that can create a magnetic field which can throw the needle off good way to test this put it in nice and close move it out further away and you know if the needle moves you might need to just empty your pockets once you've done this you just want to rotate your whole body keeping your arms nice and tight into your body until the magnetic needle starts to move around it should be swinging now and then it should align up towards that um you know be aligned with the, with those kind of uh, orientation lines now some of you are probably going to say that it's not perfectly aligned that's fine i am not looking at the compass right now i'm looking at my screen which is tiny but you want to make sure that the magnetic needle lines up with the compass perfectly once that is aligned up you're not following that magnetic needle you're actually going to follow this which is the direction of travel arrow so you actually want to follow this that's the direction you're going to travel in so the best way to do this is if you start looking up from that point so i'll just move the gimbal up on my camera here and now i can see something in, in the horizon now what i would do from this point on is i would pick a point that aligns with that arrow and i can see there's a slightly whiter tree than the rest of them and i can see that all the way up till i get to that tree so i would walk and aim for that visual marker in the distance and then even if i go off track or i need to walk around in this case i do because there's a bit of a dip and a hollow i can still get myself back on track and aligned with that visual point and then i just want to get to that point find the next one and do the same process again and that's it you know how to take and walk on a bearing now now when you set off and you're walking on a bearing if you do want to keep track of how far you've walked don't forget to stop your stopwatch and if you don't know how to do that calculation that was in one of my previous videos and if you found this useful think about subscribing and hopefully i'll see you next time